Morning states across the country are looking for a way to try to reopen, and that includes South Carolina, which reopens for business today. Yes, all of this comes as we learn more about peak coronavirus dates here at home and what's being done to feed families that are still struggling to put meals on the table. Now, here is all that you need to know today. New data shows Mecklenburg County will hit its peak for coronavirus cases June 27th. This new peak date does not mean that our stay at home order will be in place until then. It just means that we are doing a better job of flattening the curve, and that is encouraging news there. Right now, if we do continue to socially distance ourselves at that same rate, the county will need roughly 2,000 hospital beds to treat COVID-19 patients. And the great news is that we have 2,500 hospital beds countywide. And now more help is on the way for North Carolina families struggling to get food on the table. The state just announced a new program to help them buy food for children impacted by school closings. The PEBT program will provide families with $250 per child over two payments. The first payment should be coming in in the weeks ahead. And today in South Carolina, businesses previously considered non-essential will reopen. Governor Henry McMaster reversed his executive order yesterday. This includes clothing and shoe stores, as well as jewelry and department stores. And it comes as cases of coronavirus increase in South Carolina. The state reported four new deaths and 64 new cases yesterday. South Carolina health officials expect 750 new cases per week by early May. And we know how hard the economy has been hurting since that work or home order went into place just two weeks ago. Yeah, some are thrilled that stores are opening back up today. Others not on board with this. We have reporter Anthony Costura joining us live from the state line right now. And Anthony, the businesses that open up today will be held to strict social distancing rules. And they do need to follow those guidelines. But Governor McMaster says that people's compliance with the rules so far really helped him make his decision to partially reopen the state. The state's new plan reverses the governor's executive order he put in place just a few weeks ago. The non-essential businesses that are allowed to reopen include department stores, craft stores, and flea markets, just to name a few. Each business can only have 20% of its max occupancy, which means we'll likely see lines of people before they can get in. And police can still break up groups of three or more if they're not socially distancing. Some say it's too soon to do this unless there is strict enforcement. But McMaster has said he would like the state's economy to be booming by the end of June. Our measured, deliberate approach uh, has been the right one, we believe. Our goal was to cause the most damage possible to the virus while doing the least possible damage, at least permanent damage, to our businesses. We have not yet hit our peak, that we are in the peak weeks now. So I do have some concerns about it. The rent still goes on, the utilities still go on, and so there's got to be some generation of revenue for these local businesses. Under the governor's new order, barbershops, salons, and gyms will not be allowed to reopen. You still cannot dine inside of a restaurant just yet, and the governor has not made a decision on whether the school year will resume. Brittany. All right, Anthony, still just so many questions. We'll be waiting to see how all of this unfolds. Also, Governor McMaster, he has changed up the rules for beaches there. This is pretty important because it's getting warm out and we're heading into the tourism season. Yeah, that's right. He has allowed beaches to reopen, but he is allowing each government to decide on that. So late last night, leaders in North Myrtle Beach decided to reopen its beach today starting at noon. However, the town of Myrtle Beach says it will keep its public beaches closed for now, and that includes access points, piers, and docks. Brittany? All right, Anthony, thank you so much. We know that many people will be anxious to get outside. And, of course, that slide in tourism, it has certainly been felt in the hotel industry. A national study looked into the industry's job losses. And in South Carolina, there are 129,000 jobs that are supported by hotels. An estimated 58,000 people are expected to lose their jobs. The study predicts that North Carolina hotel workers will be hit even harder. More than 216,000 jobs are supported by hotels, and an estimated 97,000 people are expected to lose those jobs. In Georgia, businesses there will reopen starting on Friday. Now that announcement came from the governor just yesterday, and that includes restaurants, gyms, hair salons. Social distancing rules still apply, just like they will in South Carolina. Restaurants and 
Even movie theaters can open up next Monday. And we are keeping an eye on a situation at a hotel in South Charlotte. This is where people were told to leave last week. And last night we learned water and power at the Days Inn on Woodlawn Road. They have now been shut off, possibly as a move to get those tenants out. And we told you earlier, guests there were told the hotel is closing because of the economic downturn. Many guests say they were given maybe a two-hour warning. The hotel's general manager says he had no choice but to close. This was after his staff refused to work because of coronavirus safety concerns. Some residents tell us they have nowhere to go. I mean, they could have gave us a, a better notice, a two-week notice, a week notice, a 24-hour notice. It's, it's just very inconvenient. While many of the residents left throughout the day, others stayed and they leaned on legal advice. The general manager says that he's trying to work with the residents right now, even offering refunds to those who have already paid. And we have a major update to a story we told you about yesterday morning. The manager of a West Charlotte motel says that a message to guests that they needed to get out was actually a mistake. Residents of the suburban extended stay on Queen City Boulevard told us that they told, were told to leave over the weekend. Well, management now says they were encouraging people to leave because of the shared ventilation system. Now, the manager says that employees are feeling unsafe and they won't return to work, but tenants can stay if they want. Now, families living in hotels do have protections. For example, they're protected if they can't pay up. Earlier this month, the Attorney General sent letters out to dozens of hotels warning them the state's halt on evictions does apply to people living in a hotel as well. And counselors in Gaston County say they're seeing an increase in stress and anxiety. We talked to two of them working with a group called Gateway, and they said that the people that they're seeing are more worried about more changes because of the disease than about the disease itself. They say that business closings and stay-at-home orders made some people feel helpless. If we don't attend to the emotions now, then they come back to haunt us later. It's added fuel to the fire of all their, their normal anxieties. Now, Gateway is working to get money to provide free sessions to people who are dealing with anxiety. And Channel 9 also has a comprehensive list of mental health resources for all 22 counties in our area. So you can find it on our WSOC News app. It is right under the Community tab.